Welcome to the IT Shed. In this video we're going to look at CS50's introduction to programming with Python. Problem set 3. Outdated. So in the United States, dates are typically formatted in the month, day and year format. This assignment wants us to implement a program that prompts the user for the date in the month, day and year format. Likes of 9-8-16-36 or September the 8th with a comment in it. 1636. We're then to output that date in the format of year, month and day. If the user inputs a date that's not in that format, then we're going to take ignores and reprompt them and assume that every month is no more than 31 days. So an example here, 8 September 1636 is ignored because it's not in the proper format. So the user is reprompted. And when it's done properly here, September 8th with a comma, 1636, then it's outputted as year, month, and day. Same as when it's inputted properly here, it's outputted as year, month, and day. So as usual, we make our folder, we'll cd into our folder, and then we'll code outdated.py. And then we're going to test it with CS50. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our list of months and bring it across to our program. I'm going to assign it to a variable and I'm going to name the variable months. Now I'm going to start with a while loop because as you see in our program it keeps going, it keeps prompting the user the whole time so that's using a while loop. So I'm going to try a while loop with while true. I'm going to take input from the user, so I'm going to create a variable called date. And I'm going to assign it to the input, so input, it's the input function. And then here I'm going to put date as a string. And the reason I'm putting date as a string in here is from our assignment you see that they have date here prompting the user for the date. So this will prompt the user to input the date. I'm also going to use a method called .strip. Uh, we'll come back to this later on, but this is going to strip any white spaces out between the, the date input by the user. Because we'll see later on that if I don't have this, that we'll actually fail our assignment. Now remember what we're trying to do here. We have two types of inputs that the user may correctly input. So it's a date in the form of all numbers, or a date with the word of the month and there's a comma. So what's unique here, in the first one we have a forward slash and in the second one we have a comma. So let's take one at a time. So for this one here, as I said, the unique thing here is a forward slash. So our code is going to be if forward slash indeed. So month, day, year is assigned to date dot split. Now split is a method and why are we splitting? We're splitting at the forward slash. So what are we doing here? So the user is inputting a date and for instance he inputs this date here with 9 being the month, 8 being the day and 1636 is the year. So when that's inputted as it is here we're looking to see is there a forward slash in it, which there is. So if the forward slash is in it, then it's splitting it. And split is a method that will split. So it split each side of the forward slash. So I can assign these together. Now you could always do it the other way around. You could list them down here separately, but this will do the same job. Month, day, and year. So month will be assigned the nine, day will be assigned the eight, and the year will be assigned 1636 respectively. So if I was to print the print month and just do the same as the rest, run the program. As you see, we have date, and if I was to type nine slash eight sixteen thirty six, now you see it's been split. So nine eight sixteen thirty six. Now we have nine and one line, eight, and we have sixteen thirty six. So in essence, this split, the split method, split at the forward slash and assigned 
each of these to these separate variables. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is whether the user inputs something in this format, which is a string as for the month, and then we have the date, comma, and the year. So the comma here is a unique aspect. So we're going to use an elif statement. So elif, comma, in date, and if it is, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to split it. So I'm going to copy this part of it. So date dot split. But this time we're not actually splitting at the comma. Because remember, this is what we're looking at here. This is the input we're looking at. So we no point splitting at the comma. We're going to split at the white spaces. So dot split is a method. And the default of this method is the white spaces. Now we can always put in here to split at the white spaces, but there's no need for it because this is the default factor. So if you have split with nothing with no arguments, then it's going to split at the white spaces. So it's going to actually give the same output as we did here with the one above. Okay, now we need to check to make sure the user input is in the right format. So we need to make sure that April is correct. If it's not in the right format as per the assignment here, it's going to read prompt. So we need to check is, like say it's put in April 2nd, 1955, for instance, is April actually in our list of months? If it is, we need to convert that to, as per here again, we need to convert it to an integer. So in this case, we have to convert April to four because it's the fourth month. So we need to find a season in here and then convert it to the actual month of the year. So um, January it will be one, February two, etc. So we're going to use an if statement within our elif statement. So it'll only be activated if this elif statement here is activated. So if month, and this is the month here we're speaking of, this month. So if month, in months, it sounds a bit confusing, but we're talking about this month. So if this month, the April, is in months, which is our list of months, then we're going to find its index. Now, index is another method in Python that will tell you where in the list it is. So we're going to use, we're going to assign month. It's going to be assigned to months dot index. month. It's all a bit cryptic. So we have our month. So we know this is April. So if April is in our list of months, which in this case it is, then we're going to change the string April to 04 because 4 is the fourth month. April is the fourth month. So we're accessing our list of months up here. And we're finding the index for April. So when it comes up here, it's going to find April in here and see where it is in the list. So in this case, it's in the fourth. But because it's a list and it starts from zero, it's actually going to be the third. Because remember, normally we, we started one for January, two for February. But this is a list and list starts at zero. So zero uh, would be for January. Then one would be February. So we're going to have to update it. So we're going to have to do month is assigned to month plus one. Because this will result in three as it's zero indexed. So we're adding one to it to make it four. Now we can always abbreviate it down to month plus equal to one. But basically they still do the same thing. So now if I was to print, run the program, we'll input April 2nd, 1955. So we get our month as four. So this has worked up here. And we get our year, 1955. But we have one problem. Because when we split up here, when we split the two, for the day, we also got the comma. So to get rid of that, 
what we need to do is we need to assign day to day dot strip. So we're stripping at the column. So again, we're just using the strip method and we're stripping the comma from the variable day and we're assigning it back to day. So if I was to rerun the program, type April 2nd, 1955, you see now our comma is gone. So everything is perfect. We have our month, which is four, April. The day is two and the year is 1955. So we just get rid of the print statements. And the last thing we need to do to finish this off is our else statement, just to reprompt. So else continue. So what this is doing, so if we have a forward slash, then do this. If we have a comma, then do this. Do all this here. But if neither of these are applicable, then reprompt, so else continue which is going to reprompt the user so if you put in something wrong if you put in the, the the date in the wrong format or you put in something totally different it's just going to reprompt as per the assignment okay one of the last things we need to do is we need to assume that every month has no more than 31 days and we we'll also need to assume that there's no more than 12 months so for that we will again use an if statement so if day is bigger than 31 or month is bigger than 12, then we are going to continue. So what we're checking for here now is that the day is no, is no bigger than 31 and the month is no bigger than 12. Now, if that is the case, then continue. So continue just means go back and ask the question again because this is incorrect. So it's error checking to make sure you don't input the 62nd day of the month rather than the second or the 31st, or that you're assuming that there's more than 12 months. So it'll just continue it means it'll just go back and reprompt the user. So it'll keep reprompting when you put in the correct day and month. Now we need to obviously make sure that uh, they are integers because the day will be taken in as a string. So this will be a string here and the month will be a string. So we need to convert that to an int. We just do that using the int function, int day and int month. So this is a form of error checking. So if everything is okay and the user enters everything as per the right day and the right month, we use an else statement to break out of the loop and into the rest of the program. So else break. Okay, that's nearly us done. We just have to take out a one potential error. If the user was to enter a mixture of both this format and that format, so a string and a forward slash, then that will throw up a value error because down here, the uh, computer tried to change the month, say April, into uh, assume it's an integer, where it's actually not an integer. So it's going to throw up a value error. And it's going to crash the program. So to fix that, we just need to use our try and accept statement. So try, and I move this out here. Accept value error. In that case, we're going to continue, which means we're going to reprompt again. So if the user, for instance, puts in something like April and then slash 10 slash 22, then that's going to, it's, ne it's neither this one or that one, it's a mixture and it's going to throw an error here because it's going to convert that where it shouldn't be. So in essence, this try and accept statement and the continue will just reprompt the user to input the correct data format. So either this format or that format. This statement here takes care of the, the days of the month and the months of the year. 
but to try and accept will take care of the make sure it's proper format there's no value error so everything's an integer and there's no strings thrown in if that happens again as i said it'll just reprompt okay for the final part we just need to print our output so we're going to do it in this format here we're going to have year dash month dash day so as you can see it's two digits so it's not nine it's zero nine so over here we're going to do our print statement and it's going to be year dash month dash day so obviously this is not going to work so i'm going to use an f string so an f string is a format string and it's before it's placed before the uh, inverted commas here now our year month and day are variables from up here so we're going to put them into curly brackets So now we have our, I'll just tidy this up. We have our variables in curly brackets. We have our dashes that are strings, and they're strings because they're within inverted commas here. And that is all encompassed in an F string, which will combine the two together. Now this is not going to work because these are strings. So we're going to have to convert these to integers. So we can do it from in here, or I prefer just to do it separately just so. So int, and of course we're going to have to sign them back to their respective variables. So now we have month being converted to an integer and assigned back to month and same with day. Now if I was to run the program as it is, we'd say this input here, the year, the month and the day, this is the output we get, we get four and three. But what the assignment requires is that it's two digits, so uh, 0, 4, and 0, 3. The way to fix that is to use colon 0, 2 and a colon 0, 2. And this just emphasizes that we needed to uh, two digits. So if I go over here and I copy our check 50, and we'll see if we have it working. Okay, we have our results. Let's just check to make sure they're all greens. Yep, all greens, perfect. Now, I just want to go back to what I did at the beginning here. I used dot strip. So the best way to explain this is if I get rid of dot strip, if I just cut it, and if I to run the program again, Now you see we get this input. And that's because there's a space in here, and that's what dot strip does. It gets rid of that spaces. Now another way to actually fix that would be to make year an integer because year here is a string. So if you were to make year an integer, that would actually fix that error as well. Just to make you aware of it, in case you are uh, doing your own programs and you have that error, that's how to fix it. Either do this here or use strip. Okay, thank you for joining me in this video. and I hope it was useful and I'll see you in the next one.